Hello, this is a key stage three video for the idea of separating mixtures. We're going to look at filtration and crystallization. So firstly, it might be useful to remember or remind ourselves what we mean by the term mixture. So a mixture is when we have two or more substances that are together, but they are not joined by chemical bonds. There's no chemical reaction that was used to make those. The second thing is that each substance in the mixture retains or keeps its properties. And finally, mixtures are usually quite easy to separate. Usually quite easy to separate. So here we have a mixture of sand and water. So that is our water and an insoluble solid. What we can do is we can separate by filtering. So we start by getting a piece of filter paper. I'm sure you've seen something like this at school. It's uh, circular, we can fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And in this way we get a kind of cone shape and that cone can go inside a filter funnel. So that can fit nice and neatly inside there. Sometimes we wet the edges with distilled water so that the cone sticks to the side of the uh, filter funnel. But uh, what we can do is just take a look at that in a more simplified version. So there it is in a simplified diagram. We've got our filter funnel there on the outside and the filter paper showing there on the inside of the filter funnel. Now let's take our mixture of sand and water from previously. We can empty the mixture into the filter paper, making sure not to overfill it. Otherwise the sandy water will go over the edge and will not separate. And we can then take a look to see what's actually going on inside and explain why the water is separated from the sand. So let's magnify into that little area there. If we were able to see, we might see something like this. Here we have our filter funnel on the outside magnified from the diagram above and there is our filter paper. You might notice that the filter paper has small holes in it and these are called pores. So those are pores in the filter paper and we also have our sand grains there on the other side of the filter paper. Now what happens is that the water passes through the pores in the filter paper but the sand grains they cannot pass through. If you look here, you can see that a sand grain is much larger than the pore in the filter paper, so it can't pass through. So in this way, the water passes through and leaves the sand in the filter paper, as you can see in the diagram there. There's our sand in the filter paper. Uh, might be worth introducing a little key word here. The sand, the stuff that stays in the filter paper, is called the residue. And this is the sand in this case and we can dry the sand, it might be still wet, well it will be still wet, so we can dry it uh, over a period of time, just leave it on a windowsill or something, or if we want it quicker, we can place it in an oven to dry, so then we end up with the dry sand that we would have had at the beginning. This is the water that has filtered through the filter paper, we sometimes call that the filtrate, but we have now separated the sand from the water using filtration. So we can just highlight the word filtrate there. So next we could take a look at how we separate a substance that can dissolve in water. So this is how we might do it. We've got a mixture of salt and water. So that's a mixture of water and a soluble solid. We can just quickly make up our soluble solid solution by adding some salt to some water, give it a little stir. And there we have our salty water. Now let's see what happens if we try and filter the solution. Let's take a closer look at what goes on. So again we can magnify that area there, we've got our filter funnel and our filter paper, but this time we've got the particles from the salt that is in our solution. Now just as before the water can pass through the pores, so there it goes. However in this scenario, in this example, the particles from the salt can pass through the pores as well. So there they go, passing through the pores, so they don't actually get filtered out. So if we tried this process here, the whole solution would pass through the filter paper and we would not separate out the two. The salt solution is there, but it's still there from what we had at the beginning, so we haven't really separated anything out. So filtering won't work because the salt particles can pass through the pores in the filter 
paper, that should say filter, not filer paper. So what do we do? Well, we can try a slightly different technique. Here's our salt solution again, but this time we use a little piece of apparatus called an evaporating basin or an evaporating dish. It looks a little something like that, but what we will do is do a simpler 2D version of that. So it's just slightly easier to draw and understand. So we place some of our solution into our evaporating basin. We can then place that among some other apparatus. So here's a Bunsen burner. We place a tripod over the Bunsen burner. This actually has three legs, but we're doing a 2D version of it. So that's a tripod. This here is something called gauze. This is flat and square, and we can place it on top of our tripod. And then on top of our tripod, we put a beaker of some water. This can be just ordinary tap water. This is not our solution that we're trying to separate. We're gonna call this a water bath. And then we can put our evaporating basin or evaporating dish over the water bath so that we can start to evaporate off some of that water. So we heat gently. The heat from the water bath will heat our solution. And if you look carefully at the evaporating basin, you'll see that some of it evaporates away. We are now left with a more concentrated solution. So if you were to see what this actually looked like in real life, here's a version of one I did at school. This is not salt solution inside the basin. This is copper sulfate solution, but the idea is exactly the same. So it's a different experiment, not salt solution, but the method is the same. Okay, so let's go back to our salt solution. So there's our evaporating dish. If we leave this now for a few days by a windowsill or something like that, the water in the solution evaporates away and leaves our crystals. So there's our crystals at the bottom of the dish. And here's an example of some that I did previously. Um, you can see there we've got some nice, quite large salt crystals and they're quite nice to see. This is an experiment you could probably do quite easily at home. So um, there we go. There we, are. we have our salt crystals or our salt, our soluble solid back again right at the end of the experiment. And the final thing to mention is sometimes if the crystals haven't completely dried, we can pat them dry with some filter paper or again, we can place them in an oven to dry completely. So then we have our crystals that we had at the beginning. So what we can do now is just summarize the two methods so that if it came up in a test or something like that, you'd be able to answer this quite confidently. We have the two processes written at the top of the page there. We'll start with filtration. So in terms of filtration, the first thing we do is to make sure that we have the filter paper folded into a cone shape and placed in a filter funnel over a clean beaker to catch the filtrate. We pour the mixture into the filter paper. We are careful not to overfill it so that it doesn't overspill and that the mixture separates. And the reason why the two parts of the mixture separate is because the water can pass through the filter paper, through the pores in the filter paper, and so it can be separated from the sand. The final point to make here is that the insoluble sand, the insoluble solid, which is the sand, remains in the filter paper. We call that a residue, and we can dry that in an oven. In terms of our crystallization, the first step was to pour the solution into an evaporating dish or an evaporating basin. We could place the evaporating dish over a water bath and heat the water bath gently. This will cause the water in the dish to evaporate. So when some or about half of the solution is left, place the dish aside for a few days. And in that way, the rest of the water will evaporate and we're going to be left with the crystals. We allow the water to evaporate slowly because the crystals are quite a bit larger when we allow the water to evaporate slowly. Now the crystals might be a bit wet, still be a bit wet or would not have dried completely. So if you have to, you could pat them dry or warm them in an oven to make sure they are completely dry and we have no more of the water left. So that's it, the two processes, filtration and crystallization. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.